Hey guys, in this video I thought I'd just show you guys how to uh, terminate a, a shielded Category 6A Panduit uh, Keystone Jack. Now this one is a model number CJS6X88TGY. It's just a shielded uh, Keystone Jack that clicks into a uh, like an adapter or a module and um, is rated to Cat 6A 10 gigabit speed. So I'll be putting these all through my house and I thought, hey, I'll show you guys how to do it because there's a little bit of a trick to it, but it's um they're pretty simple at the end of the day. So basically the tools you need are what I've got here. This is the assembly side and then the disassembly side. So we need a cable stripper. Uh, unfortunately, this one that I've got isn't big enough to be able to do the Cat 6A because it's a very thick cable compared to Cat 5 and even just Cat 6 um, being shielded and whatnot. Uh, this won't open up wide enough to be able to cut properly or cut too deep. So instead of using that, I'm going to just use a box cutter. Just carefully score around the outside and just snap it off. So I'll show you that in a sec. And then we need the installation tool or the termination tool. This one is a um, Panduit part. And it is, I've got the packet here, an EGJT. It cost me 700 yen in Akihabara. Pretty cheap. But this is what you need to click the thing together. It's used twice actually as a, as a dual purpose tool. And then you need just some cutters. These ones are flush cutters, just side cutters. And for disassembly, you need a flat blade and uh, some pointy pliers. You could probably get away with just a flat blade, but pointy pliers makes it easy to pull the wires, which I'll, I'll show you once we've terminated how to unterminate. So we've got two parts of the, uh, the connector here, the back piece and the front piece. So, put that one down for now. We're going to play with the front piece. What I'll do is I'll zoom in a bit, and um, then you can see the details of what I'm doing, because it's, it's pretty small here. Alright, so, we've got our back piece here. Start the termination. First thing, we have to open up the little uh, gate here, the strain relief. So, you can use your fingers, but I've found that just gently, really gently, using some pliers, it makes it a lot easier to open up. Otherwise you end up, I found, putting too much pressure trying to wrestle around with it. So, just like, I'm talking gentle, 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 just open that up. So it's all the way, just sticks out slightly there. Okay, then we can see on the side, we've got the uh, the legend here, the, uh, the, color, the color guide. So you see the blue is at the top left, so that's up here. Then we got the brown. Then if you're going for B, I use B. So it's orange and then green. Obviously if you use A, it's reversed. So you know, if you're going to use B, use B everywhere. If you use A, use A everywhere. There's no appreciable uh, speed difference at all uh, but between A and B. But if you use A and B at different ends, then you're going to have a crossover cable. So just be careful about that. So we'll put that aside because now we're going to strip our cable. I'm just going to use a, sm a small short bit of cable just the demonstration and what we have to do is strip back 50 millimeters now like I said my um, the capacity of my strippers is too small it's going to cut into the uh, conductors so we're not using that I'll be using my knife so I just got to just score that carefully so I don't go through and cut the uh, the shield but then we can just pull that up now you may have foil here you may have uh, braid. I've got braid. Whatever you've got, you've just got to fold it back. Get that out of the way. And then, uh, also according to whatever cable you got, you may not have shielded inner conductors. If you don't, that's perfect. You've just got to skip this step. But if you do, we've got to remove this foil all the way back. So I'll get rid of this foil out of the way. There we go. Now you notice I've chosen the correct end of the cable to go straight into here because we've got blue, brown, orange and green. So blue and orange at the back, brown and green at the front. If you go by the other end of the cable you'll find that the uh, colours are reversed. You've got to put the cable in so that the blue and brown are on one side and green and orange on, on the other. 
if they're reversed between green and orange and orange and green or brown and blue and blue and brown it doesn't matter so much but you can't have them reversed yeah you, know, you can't reverse orange and blue or brown and green it won't work in this connector because if you look carefully there you see there's a divider through the middle so you can't cross this way but they can cross that way so if your wires the wrong way around you can swap them this way you can't swap them that way so this way is okay not this way so I've I've cut the correct end of the cable so that these will go straight in and line up that's the ideal solution so before we stick this in we have to make this the correct length so I'm just gonna bing braid I'm just gonna wrap that up so I get a good contact on our on our metalized plastic there if you got foil you can cut it back you want about 12 millimeters so you just make that nice and tight just like that make sure we're wide open there yep and we can stick this through now this can be a little bit a little bit tedious but sometimes it goes straight through with no problems make sure that's twisted up properly so let's see how we go like that straight through excellent Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain. I found that the uh, the twist rate on shielded cable is slightly less than on unshielded cable because it doesn't need to be twisted so tightly being shielded. So the conductors can kind of fray just a little bit and they get caught. But this went in not so bad. Make sure we got it nice and seated there with our shield. And now we can push this piece here down, the, the locking tab. But it's going to be hard to do that by hand. So that's where our tool comes in. Now if we open up the tool, we can see inside this part here, it's like a got it on an angle, that little recess. So what we want to do is we want to put this down with the, the coloured legend, the, the diagram there, down. So the tab, this locking tab here, is facing up. Because what's going to happen is when we close this tool, that tab there is going to push down and we can use that leverage to, to really crimp that that strain relief in. So Let's get the wires out the way a bit. This sits in here on the angle. You can see there it's sitting on an angle. And then we close the tool. And there we go. Done. So that's in there nice and tight. Alright, now what we have to do is bring these wires down and through the little uh, catches here. You see along here little tabs like little barbs on all of these the white wires on the left so if you untwist your wires don't untwist them too much you want to keep the twist as up to as close as possible so we go straight down just like that and same with all the rest If the, uh, the white is on the incorrect side, I like to just give it a little bit of extra twist rather than untwist. Just so we make sure that we don't get any, like, any interference because it's you know, untwisted too much. Okay, so we got all those in. All the white, pair, the white wire of each pair is on the left. All seated down in there nice and tight. Now we just chop them off. And that's ready for termination. So we have to get our keystone jack. Now this has to go in the correct way. The way it goes in is that's the correct way up with a top this way. So the black on the top there. The uh, the pins inside are always on the top, so that when it's sitting in the wall, the dust doesn't settle on the pins. Now this goes in that way with the legend on the top because if you look inside there's a tab here that tab locks into this little bit just here you can see inside there we've got all of our um, our IDC insulation displacement connector 
little tabs, the little pins, they're like this, and then the wire goes in, that cuts through the insulation into the copper. So they then lock into here, into the wires. So what we have to do is we just put that in like that, but you can't push it by hand, it's too hard. So we get our tool again, and we reverse it the other way around. So we use it like that, but now we want to use it the opposite side. And on this side here, you see it's got this knee, this sort of like tab, or this bulge here. This goes on here like that. The, the top, the flat side goes into the tool like that. Now if we open the tool up, you see this here? It's going to push. The wire goes in between these two bits. And you just go like this. Click. And it's in. You see, just like that. and we are terminated. That's done. So there's our completed jack. All done. Category 6A, 10 gigabit rated, shielded Ethernet jack. Nice. I'm going to have 24 of these things in my house. I'm going to have sore fingers at the end of it. Alright, but what about when you want to disconnect it? You want to take it apart? Well, that's really easy. You don't need any special tools. Just a flathead screwdriver. So, you see at the bottom, see so you got the slope here at the bottom, there's this little tab here. Inside there is a little locking tab. So all you have to do is put your screwdriver in, and then give it a bit of a pull, and it comes apart. Easy. So you can reuse that, completely reusable. I'm not sure how many times, but at least a few times, enough to do some re-terminations. And to get the, the uh, wire out of here, we have to just loosen off our um, strain relief really carefully with your pliers and you can either use your pliers like I said before at the start in here or I'll chop this off to get it out of the way or you just get in there with your flat blade and lift those up because they're, they're not actually tied in there they're just looped through those little barbs so if you pull them out directly inwards. Don't lift them up, otherwise you can break the, the barbs. And then it's a matter of just pulling out. And there we go. Ready for reuse. No worries. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.